he gets exactly what he asked for. This happened when I, female, 20 at the time, was a junior in college. Here's some context. I had taken a long weekend trip to Florida with a friend of mine to visit her brother and go to the Universal Studios Fright Night Halloween event, which was awesome, by the way. We had an amazing trip, and we were on the plane about to head home. This was only my second ever time with air travel. We didn't have much when I was growing up, so vacations were not a regular thing, and the ones we took were low-key. So, there I was, just excited to be flying in my coach seat, waiting to take off. And we kept waiting. It became clear that there was a problem with the plane when the flight attendants started calling various passengers to exit to be placed on different flights so they'd make their necessary connections. Eventually, after around 40 minutes, it was just my friend and I plus around six other people. And then it was our turn to leave the plane. We were sort of near the end of the group tromping back out into the waiting area. One couple, probably in their mid 50s, had stormed up ahead of us, and by the time my friend and I emerged from the gate entrance, the rude husband was already berating the pair of attendants, who, to their credit, remained poised and calm. They tried to reassure him, but he was talking over them. This is unacceptable. You better get me the same seats we had on that flight. He had the first row in coach, the one with no seats in front of it and therefore with extra leg room. By then, the rest of us had gathered around, and the attendants began addressing the whole group, offering reassurances, filling us in that there was a critical problem with the plane, which made me very glad for the change, despite the inconvenience. The rude husband was going off through all of this, and when the attendants left to make arrangements for us all, he and his wife sat there and he continued his commentary to his poor wife. Unacceptable. How dare they? Better have same seats. And so on. Shortly, the attendants returned, and the man practically rushed them. I demand you make this right. The attendant smiled and said. You guys are all set. Sir, and she smiled at him specifically. I'm very happy to tell you that we have a flight leaving shortly and we were able to give you and your wife the exact same seats as you had booked on the previous flight. Rude husband, I should hope so. That's the least you can do. And he huffily returns to his seat. Meanwhile, the rest of us are just waiting. The attendant then turns to us, and she says, and I'm happy to let everyone else know that you'll all be flying first class with us today. Rude husband was furious and immediately jumped up to demand why they weren't flying first class while the rest of us just sat there in a state of stunned glee. The attendant just informed the man that she'd given him his request, and didn't stick around for more abuse. The wait wasn't long, and soon my friend and I were boarded into the unicorn, fabled place that is first class, as a poor, air travel newbie. It was like some fantasy land, huge seats, real hot washcloths, and though we were underage and couldn't partake of the free cocktail, we did get to choose from a basket of distinctive Pepperidge Farm cookies. And the food. We got a whole meal, which was truly delicious, with real crystal salt and pepper shakers at each place setting an actual metal cutlery. Meanwhile, rude husband is irate. My friend and I were in the last row of first class, which only had around eight seats, and we could hear him heaping abuse on the coach attendants, going off on how those kids don't deserve first class and how they should have gotten them, they're older, they should be respected, not some kids. Someone else who was in first, not from our original plane, caught on and was quite tickled with the man's ire. Then, the best part of all happened, the flight attendant in our section overheard rude husband's tirade with language specifically directed at my friend and me, who do those kids think they are, as unworthy of the honor he should have been granted. The attendant shook his head and addressed me and my friend, I'm sorry about that. Let me take care of this for you. And he closed the curtain to the coach cabin. Rude husband realized what was happening, which makes it even getter. I got one last look at his red, irate face before he was gone forever. It was glorious. Now to the comments. 
had something similar back in March 2001 when I was a lot younger. Flight from Philly to DFW was late due to bad weather in flight, pilot said we had to fly a bit out of our way due to a storm and at 25,000 feet due to turbulence. Was at the back of the plane so one of the last off, run over to the connecting gate and get there to see a plane there but the jetway already pushed back. There were some other passengers, six-ish, if I recall correctly, who missed it as well, I think my flight as they said they got in late, but could have been others, and I arrived to them all berating the two gate agents and screaming how the jetway must be put back so they can board. I take a seat near the commotion and wait for the agent to rebook everyone. When they're done, I go up and say I also missed the connection and ask for the best way for me to get to SFPO. She responds the best way is first class with a smile and prints me a ticket for the next flight. Like OP, was under 21 so couldn't drink on board, but I still remember that to this day. Wouldn't expect that nowadays, I think most airlines flag agents who rebook people into a higher class of service without a very good reason, but always makes me smile when the memory comes back. I had it happen once where I somehow managed to check in via the self-service kiosk right in the middle of an agent booking seats for a family of four, and as a result, broke up their family. My boarding pass had printed and I grabbed in and was walking past the desk towards security when the agent called to me did you get seat X? I checked, and that was indeed my seat. She asked me if I would mind changing it, so that the family could all sit together. I said sure, no problem. She paused for a second and said here, have a seat in first class. I was flummoxed and happily took the upgrade. When I boarded the plane and sat down, seemingly a millisecond later the flight attendant came up to me and asked me if I'd like a drink. I took the drink and was exhausted from my traveling, and shortly after finishing the drink, I believe during takeoff, I fell asleep and slept the whole way to my destination. So I didn't really get to enjoy the amenities of first class, aside from having a seat comfortable enough to actually sleep in. Having a seat comfortable enough to actually sleep in, that would be 100% of the charm for me. Honestly gotten more joy out of reading this MC than any other. Congrats on your karmic first class seats, smiley. Karma first class is the best first class. First class compliance, woohoo. You can always gauge someone's true colors by how they treat people in service work, especially when a lot of the time, said service workers have a lot of leeway to change your experience for better or for worse. A couple of weeks ago the CEO of a startup I've been following for years tweeted that this was a good method to evaluate candidates to senior and management positions he takes them to a restaurant and if they were rude to the waiters, they were absolutely out no matter the talent. A Redditor also said that in a comment on an MC post yesterday, seems to be a common, and clever, tactic, although I still don't get how people wouldn't be on their best behavior. Dude should have been grounded. In these days, they very well could have been yeeted to the tarmac for flight attendant abuse. Or for combative demeanor. Both good reasons to lose your place on a flight. OP replied. I agree. I could tell you how long ago I was a junior in college, but let's just say it was a good plenty years ago and call it a day. LOL. But they were more tolerant back then because it was pre-9-11. Everything changed after that. Reminds me of my first trip to Las Vegas, back in the 90s. We got to our hotel at 1 in the morning, and at check-in, the people at the desk next to us were having a shit fit about being on the 10th floor, same as their friends. The desk clerks had a confab, and ours came back, explained the situation, and ask would you mind terribly if we placed you a little higher up. All the same to us, so we were gracious and accommodating. Which is how we ended up with a strip view jacuzzi suite at the top of the Luxor Pyramid. I really hope the folks next to us appreciated being on down 10 with their friends. It's been 26 years, and I still think of that with delight. For the couple having a fit about being in the same floor as their friends. What does it really matter?
How much time are they spending in their room? It's Las Freaking Vegas. Go have some fun. There's some value in having adjoining rooms, especially if they're the kind with the door that you can open to allow easy passage to both suites, but really, it's pretty inconsequential and not really a big deal if you don't have that. This is just perfect. Arrogance rewarded and hearing it unfold after. Karma was perfect all around. For the patient and the demanding. I have worked in the airlines for 13 to 14 years as a mechanic. Got my fair number of flights. But when shit like this happens, just be polite and work with them to find a solution. I was upgraded to business on an Emirates flight when my SAS flight was delayed too much to reach a connecting flight. I was supposed to sleep on that night flight, but I was not able to, just wanted to get the most out of it. So just dress nice and play ball with the representatives. For sure. I got free alcoholic drinks on a US flight and lots of goodies, while seated on economy. The thing is, Unlike some airlines, alcoholic drinks are not free on U.S. flights. <laughs>